Tonight, it all comes down to this. Our first semifinal. Welcome to my world. Our three strongest champions return. You're just gonna feel the pressure. Get set, go. Get in there, Rob. Get in there. Don't put it out, put it out, call it out. Day, a place in the $100,000 grand finale. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, my God! Whew. Isaiah? I'd like to be able to breathe a little bit. <laughs> this is the American Bible Challenge semifinal. our first semi-final. Tonight, three returning champion teams will go head-to-head -head in a lively contest of faith, fun, and facts to win cash for their favorite charities. And the winner will be coming back to play for $100,000 in our grand finale. To get here, our first team had to take down a trio of triplets and even a bunch of bikers. And when they finally won, they almost took me down. Take a look at the Righteous Rubies. I'm Keith. I'm Ogechi. And I'm Ndidi. And we're the Righteous Rubies. My sister Ndidi is a big fan of the show, and she thought that we should go on and try and win money for a Ruby project. I just love the idea about playing for a cause. It doesn't get better than that. The Righteous Rubies, what does that come from? We're all about reaching out to girls who have stories of abuse, and we provide these all-inclusive retreats. That is so awesome. Right from the start, the Righteous Rubies went toe-to-toe -to -toe with another all-female team. Lana! Woo! Let's go! We can do this! That's it, one, two, one! When we hit that fork in the cup, all three of us, I was like, OK, game right. on. And faced a nail-biting round getting to the final revelation. Goliath, the final yeah. answer. Very confident in no, that as not. well. Please Does Ogechi have three right answers? Red Roots got seven correct answers. They're great. I don't care what they did. It's about what we're doing right no. now. I had the eye of the tiger. I'm not going home, a loser. <laughs> Peter. Daniel. Simon. Congratulations, you got it. <laughs> Please welcome back the Righteous Rubies, Ndidi, Peace, and Ogechi. Welcome back, ladies. You look beautiful tonight. When you won the $20,000, y'all <laughs> lost your minds. Yes. Yeah. 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 You've already got $20,000. What does that mean to the Ruby Project? We were able to serve about 10 girls with what we were able to scavenge up by borrowing money from friends and from family. If we had $100,000, how many more girls can we actually reach right. out to? Wow. So I know your mom is here tonight. Yes. So, mom. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So, so part of mom's excitement is she might get paid back a little bit for all of this. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good luck tonight, but you're not the only winners. Last week, the Christian Wrestling Federation took their opponents to the mat. Check this out. We are We are the Christian Wrestling Federation. Woo! What's up, Rockwell, Texas? Christian Wrestling Federation travels the world telling people about Jesus Christ using professional wrestling. Ah, here we come, Bible Challenge! From the get-go, the Christian wrestlers showed us their shrewd moves, taking an early lead. Come on, Jesus Christ, come on, come on. Yeah! Congratulations, guys. I don't ever feel like we ever had it in the bag. Even when we got the lead, it was an uncomfortable lead. I'm just gonna go with Nimrod. How prophetic, because that's nowhere close to the right <laughs> answer. We just completely blew those answers. My nerves were definitely working against me. But in the final round, they fought back. Serpent. Correct. Uh, seventh. Center. Correct. Nine correct answers. Yeah! That means Team Christian Wrestling Federation, you have won. Congratulations. We are the Christian Wrestling Federation, and it doesn't matter who we're competing against in the semifinals, because we're going to lay the smack down on our competition. Yeah! 
Please welcome back the Christian Wrestling Federation, Mike, Bill, and Rob. And I love the fact you got the little Ric Flair. Woo! Woo! Last time you were here, you won $20,000. What's that do for you? We're playing for the Austin Street Center, which is a huge homeless shelter in downtown Dallas. And that $20,000, that would help them to be able to uh, feed, and they have clothing and blankets and stuff. That would mean that many more people would be able to come into the center. Oh, well, good luck tonight. Let's add to that $20,000. Good to see you again. Thanks. Finally, our last team of champions put a fork in their competition and never looked back. Here they are, the Sisters of Mary. I'm Sister Maria Suso. I'm Sister Peter Joseph. And I'm Sister Evangeline. And we're, we're Team Sisters, Sisters of Mary. I think we're a pretty competitive team. Nine. I'm probably the least competitive, naturally speaking, but Sister Peter Joseph is very competitive. I'm very competitive. <laughs> Christianity is all about giving your whole self to whatever God's calling you to do, and sometimes God's calling you to play the American Bible Challenge. <laughs> when it was time to get physical, the Sisters of Mary took everyone by surprise. Are you kidding me? The nuns just whooped you, man. And in the final round, they sent the competition flying. Fire furnace. Correct. Man. Correct. Um, Job. Correct. That is four answers. $20,000. Way to go, sisters. The nuns high five. There we go. Team Sisters of Mary, we're praying for you. Oh! Please welcome back the Sisters of Mary, Sister Evangeline, Sister Maria Suso, and Sister Peter Joseph. Good to see you again. Good to be here. So, the last time we were here, we were talking about who you were playing for. Yes. Talk about that a little bit. Yes. Well, we have four sisters that began our community about 16 years ago, and they started with nothing and have given everything to make our community a place where we can give ourselves completely to God, and they're approaching retirement. We have a retirement plan in place, but there's no money in it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a retirement plan just like that, yeah. So 20 grand helps. 100 grand would help even more, wouldn't it? Good luck tonight. Nice to see you again. All right, everybody, you ready to play? Let's go. Let's do it. All right, well, you know how it works. Just like before, we'll start off with teams of three. Then as the game goes on, we'll go down to two. And then finally, just one player. At the end of the game, the top two teams will go head to head. And one of those teams will be leaving here tonight with another $20,000 for their charity and a shot at $100,000. So let's play the American Bible Challenge. Now, our first category is called You Don't Know Me from Adam. <laughs> I love this one. In this game, we're going to meet a series of mystery biblical characters who will personally give us several clues about their identity. Once you think you have ID'd the character, hit the buzzer. Each correct answer is worth 10 points. Each wrong answer is minus 10 points. Here we go. Hello, sir. How are you tonight? Oh, hi, Jeff. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. Thank you. All right. Can you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? I'm a confirmed bachelor. Sorry, ladies. Sister Maria Suso. Jeremiah. Sorry, that is incorrect. Can you continue, please? I was once a snake handler, but not by choice. <laughs> I got shipwrecked more times than Gilligan. Phil. Oh. Paul. Paul is absolutely right. Yeah. It is Paul. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Yes. All right, take a look at the board. Let's meet our next mystery guest. Hi, Jeffy. So happy to be here. All right, can we learn a few things about you? I'm totally a valley girl. I will work for shekels. Don't judge me. Peace. All right, let's continue. I get more secrets than the Nazarite Inquirer. Sister Peter Joseph. Delilah. Delilah is absolutely right for 10 points. 
Never trust a woman with a five o'clock shadow just around her mouth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, take a look at our next one. Hello, sir, how are you? Can we hurry this up? I'm double parked. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, can we learn a little bit about you tonight? You know what I don't like? Little kids. <laughs> you know what else I don't like? Other kings. Mike. Goliath. Go, go for it. Goliath? Goliath is absolutely wrong. Oh. Ah. Sister Maria Suso. Herod. It is Herod. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to give each team a chance to pick up 25 additional points here. And you won't be ringing in for this one. We ask 100 users of the online Bible, you version, this question. Do you believe that God can change his mind? Now, what percentage said that they think God can change his mind? 75%, 42%, or 16%? Pick the right one, you'll pick up 25 additional points. So teams, talk it over amongst yourselves while you talk it over at home. Our first semifinal has begun. Stay with us, ladies and gentlemen, Kirk Franklin and the American Bible Challenge Choir. Semi-final. We ask 100 users of the online Bible, you version the following question. Do you believe God can change his mind? What percentage said God can change his mind? Is it 75%, 42%, or 16%? Kirk, what are you thinking they answered? I, I would say 42%. You're going to go somewhere in the middle. Yeah, there. yeah. Okay, well... During the break, each team wrote their choice on their tablets. So if you pick the right percentage, you'll pick up 25 additional points for your team. Let's see who you picked. Okay, we have Righteous Rubies with 75%. Christian Wrestling Federation said 42%. They agree with you, Kirk. And Sisters of Mary said 75%. Why? Well, we thought that the most people would think that God would change his mind, but we believe that since God knows all things ahead of time, he won't change his mind. Okay. Wow. It's interesting. But what really matters is what the Uversion app user said, and the percentage they chose was 75%. <laughs> so, ladies, congratulations. 25 extra points for the Righteous Rubies and the Sisters of Mary. All right. Everybody doing okay so far? Yeah, we're good. You just kind of feel the pressure when we get to the semifinals because one of you is going to win $20,000 additional dollars tonight. And then there's that $100,000 thing that's kind of hanging out there. So, while you've been thinking about all that, we thought, why not get them out from behind their podiums and do a little something physical? So this is a game we like to call Book 'em Daniel. Here is how it works. Underneath the cloth on your table are seven books of the Bible. When I say go, you'll uncover your books and figure out the order in which they appear in the Bible. Then stack them in that order, alternating horizontal and vertical like this. Once you finish building your stack, step back behind your line to lock it in. The first team to stack them in the right order and get behind the line with their stack still standing earns 50 points. And if you do it wrong or it doesn't stay standing, you're going to have to do it again. Everybody understand? Yes. All right. All three teams are going to play at the exact same time. On your marks, get set, go. Get in there, Robbie. Get in there. Put it up. 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 Put it up.
Sisters of Mary are off to a fast start. Righteous Rubies are right behind them. All right, the Sisters of Mary have Deuteronomy, Judges, Second Chronicles. The Righteous Rubies have the same thing. Looks like Christian wrestlers have Deuteronomy, Judges, and Ezra. The Sisters of Mary have Deuteronomy, Judges, Second Chronicles, Job, Obadiah, Ezra, and Haggai. The Rubies have Deuteronomy, Judges, Second Chronicles, Job, Ezra, Obadiah, and Haggai. Three are wrong. It's still anybody's game. The wrestlers are back up fast with Deuteronomy, Judges, Ezra, Job, and Second Chronicle. Ezra, Job first. Job first. The wrestlers now have Deuteronomy, Judges, Ezra, Job, Second Chronicles, Obadiah, and Haggai. Okay, they're behind the line. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Righteous Rubies are behind the line. Righteous Rubies, you got it. That was so close. I would love to see that again. I was watching, it's like, are they going to get back oh over God. the line or not? Watch how close this is. Okay, there's the book standing. All right, everybody's back over the line. Oh, there it goes, right there. Great job, though. You stacked them correctly. They stood standing. You get the 50 points. Let's review the order. Deuteronomy, Judges, Second Chronicles, then Ezra, Job, Obadiah, and Haggai. Yes, there you go. When we come back, the questions get more challenging, and just two of you will play on each team. Plus, my sweet Lord, and we're going to court. Can I get a witness? More of this season's first American Bible Challenge semifinal just ahead. Yeah. Welcome back to our first American Bible Challenge semifinal. All right, guys, well, you have been through this before, so it's time now for one of you to sit it out. Are you going to do like you did the first time? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. all right, Mike's going to take a hike. Don't get comfortable. You're going to be back in just a little yes, bit. Sir. All right, well, this time our category is called My Tweet Lord. <laughs> we will be showing you some tweets as if they were written by biblical figures. So here is your first question. Just save the meal and the profits. Made poisonous stew edible by adding a pinch of flour. Hashtag eat your heart out, Martha Stewart. This tweet is most likely from what person in 2 Kings 4? 2 Kings 4. Four. Poisonous stew. Flour saved the prophets. Who, so who are you thinking? Elijah, uh, it's Kings. Uh, oh, you want to say Samuel? Sure. We're going to say Samuel. You're going to say Samuel? Samuel? Actually, it's Elisha. 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 All right. All right, sisters. Time for one of you to take a step back. Who's it going to be? We cast lots again. Yeah. We're on her again. So. Sure. All right. Yeah, you don't want to mess up a good thing. It worked last time. Take a look at the board. Here's your tweet. Messiah's coming, and I'm calling it. I'll be shoe-in for most quoted prophet. Hashtag take that, Haggai. <laughs> so here's your question. This tweet is most likely from what Old Testament prophet whose book was quoted 66 times in the New Testament? Oh, your favorite. Isaiah? Yes. I think we're right. Isaiah. Isaiah is absolutely right. Congratulations. 50 points. Good job, sisters. All right, Righteous Rubies, All who's right. going to play and who's going to stand back? Guess you standing back. We'll get you. See you in a little bit. All right, take a look at the board, ladies. Here is your tweet. Paul wrote a chillax letter to the master I escaped from. Looks like I'm going back to work. Yay? Hashtag still free either way. 
Here is your question. What New Testament slave most likely tweeted this? Do you have any clue? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's think about this. Um, I'll just say Silas. That's, I don't know. Silas is not, no. Silas. Okay, so it's not Silas. It's not Silas. Barnabas. Or it's not Barnabas. Okay, it's not Barnabas. Uh, give me a name. John the Slave. John. John the Slave. John the Slave. Yeah. You're not going to believe this. It, it is not John the what? Slave. It's Onesimus. Onesimus was the slave Paul talked about in his letter to Philemon. Oh yeah. Onesimus. That was his nickname. <laughs> that was his nickname, she said. It's okay. Good job, guys. All right, let's recap the scores. Christian Wrestling Federation, zero. Righteous Ruby, 65. Sisters of Mary, 85. But I'm not going to give you any rest before we play the next game. This one is called Chosen People's Court. Once again, we've come up with fictional situations that a biblical judge might have had to rule on. Now, you'll have to choose the correct ruling based on actual biblical law. Each team will get their own court case, and the correct answers are worth 50 points. Here's the first one. The case of the bruising Benjamite. The plaintiff, a servant working for a Benjamite winemaker. The defendant, the winemaker. The case, the servant claims his tooth was knocked out by the winemaker in a fit of rage. The servant is suing for damages. All right, guys, here is the question. According to Exodus 21, 27, how should the case be resolved? What does the Bible say should happen? The servant is set free. The servant pokes out the master's eye, or there is no penalty. I for an eye, but no, that's no, not, not here. It's not eye for an eye. I know that's it's a tooth. tooth. There's no penalty. I mean, it's a. I'm thinking there's no penalty because yeah, he's a slave. He's a slave. It's a slave. You gonna go with that? Let's go with it. All right. There is no penalty. Actually, the correct answer is the servant is set free. The owner who knocks out the tooth of a male or female servant must let the servant go free to compensate for the tooth. Wow. So the tooth shall set you free. There you go. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right, you ready for your court case? Take a look at the board. The case of the bloodthirsty bovine. The plaintiff, a slave owner. The defendant, the owner of a bull next door. The case, the bull got loose and killed his neighbor's slave. The neighbor is seeking biblical justice. All right, sisters, here is your question. According to Exodus 21, 28 through 32, which is always a consequence when someone gets killed by a bull? The bull's owner goes to jail, the bull is stoned to death, or the bull is killed and eaten. Well, there's no jail. Yes, and I think that the bull wouldn't be eaten because it would be considered um, having to do with sin. So I think maybe stoned to death. Yes. So, so we're going to say the bull is stoned to death. So, sisters, according to Exodus 21, 28 through 32, the bull is stoned to death. You are absolutely right. <laughs> We ready for this? Yes. yes. I so hope this is a case about John the Slave. <laughs> Take a look at the screen. The case of the bumped off burglar. The plaintiff, a thief's brother. The defendant, a woman who was burglarized. The case, the woman killed the thief while he was attempting to rob her house. All right, here's the question. According to a loophole found in Exodus 22, two and three, the woman would be guilty of bloodshed if the thief were what? A relative, killed after sunrise, poor in stealing food. Okay, I'm a really good fan of process of elimination. Okay. So, um, if okay. she was found guilty, if she killed him after sunrise, unless it was a Sabbath, would it be a crime? I don't think you would get in trouble for killing someone after sunrise, okay, right? Okay, that's right. Okay, okay, a relative, maybe like 
ah, I don't know. <laughs> if someone was porn stealing food, I don't know. The Bible is about justice. If they were poor, they needed food. Yeah, I like porn stealing food. Uh huh. I like that one. The answer is poor, poor and, and stealing, stealing food. food. Poor and stealing food. That's what we're going with. It is actually killed ah. after sunrise. Oh. It says, as if a thief is caught breaking in at night and has struck a fatal blow, the defendant is not guilty of bloodshed. So if it's at night, but if it happens after sunrise, mm -hmm. the defender is guilty of bloodshed. That's right. very interesting, okay. isn't it? Oh, very. All right. Out. Let's switch it up, everybody. It was hard. It's okay. It's okay. round and the chance to win another $20,000 for their charity, as well as a shot at our $100,000 grand prize when we come back. All right, Kirk and the American Bible Challenge Choir, take it away! Challenge. All right, here we are at the end of the round. The top two teams will be moving on to the final revelation, and that means that one team is going to be going home. So the pressure is really on. It all comes down to something we call the chosen three. Now I'm going to ask each player one question. Here's the thing. That question has three correct answers, okay? Each right answer you give me will be worth 100 points. Give me all three right answers. You'll get 300 points. All right, the Sisters of Mary, we're going to start with you. You're in the lead right now. If you get two of these answers right, you are a lock to play in the final revelation. <laughs> you ready? I'm ready. Here comes your question. Leviticus 8.23 says, Moses anointed Aaron with blood from the sacrifice. Which three of Aaron's body parts did Moses anoint? Right earlobe, tongue. Right thumb, sole of right foot, forehead, right big toe. All right, I'm pretty sure it's not the tongue. And I don't think it's the forehead or the sole of the right foot. So I'm gonna go ahead and say right earlobe, right thumb, and right big toe. Just the fact that you answered it that quickly is amazing to me. So I told you you have to have two right answers, right? To guarantee yourself a place final revelation today. To get two, you have to have one. Does the sister have one right answer? You bet she does. There we go. Another one right. You're going on to the final revelation today. Does she have two correct answers? Yes, she does. Probably against the rules for nuns to show off. <laughs> but let's see if she has three right answers. Does she have three? You bet she does. There we go. Great job. Terrific. Congratulations. All right, Mike. Right now, my guys here have accumulated zero points. You're going to need at least one right answer to have a shot at going on to the final revelation, OK? All right. Take a look at the board. Here is your question. Which three of these are male relatives of Naomi who all die in the first chapter of Ruth? Eliphaz, Kilian, Jehoshaphat, Malan, Elimelech, or Orpah? It's not Jehoshaphat. That's a king. Uh, Limelech feels like a relative that you read about later in the book, and Orpha's out too. I, I don't know why. <laughs> so, um, the first one I can't read, the second one I can't read, so one, two, and four. <laughs> Eliphazaz, Kilion, and Malion. Welcome to my world as host of this show. <laughs> a tough job, man. I appreciate your honesty. 
So I told you you had to have one right in order to stay in the game, right? So is Eliphaz correct? Oh. Is Killian correct? Killian's right! Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A little cushion would be nice, yeah, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, I'd like to be able to breathe is a little bit. Is Malon correct? Yes, it is! All right, let's find out what the other right answer was. Elimelech, probably. It, it, you're right, actually right. It's Elimelech, yes. So, very good, though. Thank you. Woo. All right, Righteous Rubies, this right. is for you. You must have two correct answers okay. to go on to the final revelation. Ready? I'm ready. Take a look at the board. The book of 2 Kings mentions several very young rulers. What were the ages of the three youngest kings when they began their reigns? Five, seven, eight, 10, 12, or 18? I know that at least Joash was eight or five. Um, I don't remember three being the same exact age. Okay. I'm going to go with five and eight, and I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with seven. Five, eight, Good and job. seven. Okay. Good job, Okechi. So I told you, you need two correct answers to go on to the final revelation. Is five correct? Oh. Ooh. It was 12, wasn't it? Is eight correct? <laughs> you weren't sure about seven. Not. I was sure about five, but look what happened. Yeah. You weren't sure about, so you thought it could be seven or 12. The way things are going, could have been 10 or 18 too, so I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna eliminate that burden from you. It wasn't 10 or 18, it's either seven or 12. Is seven correct? If it is, you're going on to the final revelation. If not, you will be the third place team. You will get $2,500 for your charity, which is great on top That's of great. the 20,000. Is seven correct? Thank you, sir. What you guys are doing is important. God bless you for that. We've got $2,500 extra dollars awesome. to add to your $20,000, $22,500. Keep blessing people awesome. there. Thank you, sir. You you you. Thank Good you. luck to you. We will see you again. Sisters, if you would, join me down here. All right, well, the Sisters of Mary and Righteous Rubies, it is down to you, too. In the final revelation today, we're going to ask you questions about this category. Miracles of Jesus. Oh. <laughs> you girls need to get some enthusiasm. <laughs> now, you remember how it works. There's going to be some tough questions, so I'm giving you 10 minutes for some good old-fashioned Bible study. Here are your Bibles. And before you go to your backstage study rooms to prepare, we have a special word from Kurt Warner, host of The Moment on USA. Thanks, Jeff. In light of being MVP of Super Bowl 34, I have a message for the two competing teams in the American Bible Challenge semifinals. You've made it to the playoffs. It's very impressive. Time to dig deep and score lots of points. And remember, 
If you don't know an answer, do what I do best. Pass. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kurt. I couldn't agree more. Off. All right, ladies. Off you go. Up next, our two teams battle it out for the first spot in our $100,000 grand finale. The season's first American Bible Challenge semifinal will be right back. Kirk, hit it! in our grand finale on the line. Peter's mother-in-law. Yeah. She's sick. She had a high oh, fever. The woman with a oh, hemorrhage okay. has years. There's a number of years oh, that that is. 12 years. 12 okay. years? Okay. You can look it up. Blind yeah. Bartimaeus receives his, his sight. Jesus walks on water. It's just before dawn when he's walking on the lake, and I think he's a ghost. You know what, sisters? I think we got this. We have it. I think so, too. We're going to win. <laughs> our strategy when we go out there is to take every question and not use more than what, two seconds? Be fast. Uh, be less, fast. Less you know two. it, guess it, pass. Bible study is officially over, so let's see what our teams learned about the miracles of Jesus. Righteous Rubies, get on out here. <laughs> Welcome back, ladies. So, Righteous Rubies, are you ready for this? Yes. Ready. Here's how the final revelation works. You will have one minute to answer as many questions as you can on the miracles of Jesus. I'll ask each one of you one question at a time. First you, then you, then you. If you don't know the answer, you can say pass, and I will move on to the next question. Now, the other team will play these exact same questions. The team with the most right answers wins, all right? Yes. If you do this, you'll be moving on to our grand finale where you will play for $100,000. Good luck. Can we dim the lights, please? Thank you. But 60 seconds on the clock, if you would. This is the miracles of Jesus. Let's start the clock. In what gospel does the miracle of turning water into wine appear? Mark. Incorrect. When Jesus walked on the water, the disciples feared he was a what? Pass. What kind of tree did Jesus wither? Fig. Correct. Before Jesus raised him from the dead, how many days had Lazarus been in the tomb? Four. Correct. In Mark 10, what was the name of the blind man Jesus healed? Pardon me. Correct. Jesus healed 10 men at once, afflicted with what? Leprosy. Correct. In what town does Luke say Jesus miraculously fed the 5,000? Galilee. Incorrect. How many years was the woman bleeding? Twelve. Correct. What was the name of the synagogue leader whose daughter was brought back? Jarius. Correct. What apostle's mother-in-law did Jesus heal? Peter. Correct. When Jesus healed a demon-possessed man, what name did the demon call himself? Legion. Correct. In John 5, Jesus heals a paralyzed man beside what pool? Bethsaida. Incorrect. <laughs> All right, ladies. Eight correct answers, same as last time, when you won. Question number one, in what gospel does the miracle of turning water into wine appear? The correct answer is John. Question number two, when Jesus walked on water, the disciples feared he was a what? A ghost. Uh, question number seven was, in what town does Luke say Jesus miraculously fed the 5,000? That's Bethsaida. And on the last one, it's actually Bethesda. You said Bethsaida. It's Bethesda where Jesus heals a paralyzed man beside the pool. But that's still eight correct answers. Very good job. So the other team needs nine to win. How are you feeling? I feel strong. You feel strong? Yes, I feel good. Strong. All right. Let's bring the Sisters of Mary out now. Welcome back, sisters. 
All right, I can tell you this. The Righteous Ruby's got eight correct answers, so you will have to beat their score in order to win another $20,000 and a chance to play in our $100,000 American Bible Challenge Grand Finale. All right, Sisters of Mary, are you ready for this? We're ready. Okay. The tension is building here. One of these teams is going to be the first team to make it to our American Bible Challenge Grand Finale for a chance at $100,000 for their charity. We're going to find out what happens right after this. Final. Well, it all comes down to this. In one minute, one team is walking out of here with another $20,000 for their charity and moving on to the grand finale to play for $100,000. Yeah. Sisters of Mary, are you ready for this? Ready. I righteous rubies. They had eight correct answers, so you're going to need nine to win. You'll have the exact same questions, the exact same amount of time on the clock. Righteous rubies, if you would, step over there for me. Good luck. Can we dim the lights? Okay, put 60 seconds on the clock, please. And start the clock. In what gospel does the miracle of turning water into wine appear? John. Correct. When Jesus walked on water, the disciples feared he was a what? Ghost. Correct. What kind of tree did Jesus wither? Fig. Correct. Before Jesus raised him from the dead, how many days had Lazarus been? Four. In Correct. In Mark 10, what was the name of the blind man Jesus healed in Jericho? Bartimaeus. Correct. Jesus healed 10 men at once, afflicted with what? Leprosy. Correct. In what town does Luke say Jesus miraculously fed the 5,000? Capernaum. Uh, I'm uh, incorrect. How many years was the woman bleeding until Jesus 12. healed her? Correct. What was the name of the synagogue leader whose daughter was brought back to life by Jesus? Jairus. Correct. Which apostle's mother in law did Peter. Jesus heal? Correct. That is nine correct answers you won. Congratulations. You are the first team to make it to our grand finale this year. And you just won another $20,000 for your charity, the Sisters of Mary Retirement Fund, bringing your total to $40,000. Righteous Ruby's coming here. You play great another $5,000 for your charity. What a great game. Tonight, everybody ready? The battle continues in our second semifinal of the season. Get set, go. Come on, come on. Three of our previous winning teams will square off for $20,000. Jericho. Jerusalem. Ecclesiastes. But only one of them can move on to our grand finale. We're going to turn up the tension. And a chance at $100,000. This is a little scary. Fix the door! Oh! I like to call this the white knuckle round. I don't know. <gasps> He's got me a little nervous. Oh, dear. This is the American Bible Challenge semifinal. Stand up, y'all. Get up on your feet. How y'all doing today? Say, how y'all doing? Welcome to the American Bible Challenge semifinal. And here's your host, Jeff Foxworthy. Nothing short of miraculous this season on the American Bible Challenge. Tonight, three returning teams will face off in a spirited game of faith, fun, and facts to win money for their favorite charities. But only one of them will earn the right to come back next time and play for $100,000 in the American Bible Challenge grand finale. Now, whoever wins tonight will face one of the most formidable teams ever, the Sisters of Mary. Welcome back, ladies. Well, tonight's first team totally dominated their game from the very first question. Please welcome the Women of Faith. Hi, I'm Lisa. Hey, I'm Carrie. I'm Sheila, and we are Team Women of Faith from Dallas, Texas. My biggest fear is that we're going to go on there and be total idiots and not remember the first book of the Bible. Our incredible strategy is this. We have no strategy. <laughs> None. Nobody even thought of that before. They may have lacked a game plan, but that didn't stop the Women of Faith. Balaam. Jonah. Elijah. Elijah's absolutely right. They continue to dominate no matter what challenge they face. Go, Karen, go, Karen. 
and got one of the top scores of the season. In the lead, the women of faith. Congratulations, ladies. The women of faith cruised home to a victory. Denial. That's all you need right there. There we go. Please welcome back the women of faith, Sheila, Carrie, and Lisa. Well, nice to have you back in the semifinals. It's great to be back. So the last time you were here, you won twenty thousand dollars. You're playing for A21, which is set up to fight women's trafficking. What can you do with that? Well, with that twenty thousand dollars, we're going to open a new call center, which means like a girl like I met when I was in Russia, who wanted to get out of the sex slavery she was in. Yeah. She called the call center. They were right there. They got her, and she's on her way to a new life. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. That's so. What in the world could you do with 100000 Well, 100000 I just got back from Greece, and we could open a whole new home, a rescue home. Yeah. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah. Thanks for what you do. God bless you. Good luck today. We want to add to that 20000 Well, in their first game, the girls of Grace scored big in the fourth quarter against the players from the Cleveland Browns. Take a look at this. All right, this is our target, Lola. Let's do this assembly line. Here we go. I'm Elizabeth. I'm Cindy. I'm Ezra Lee. And we're the Girls of Grace! We have some of our veggies and some apples in there. The charity that we are winning for is Life Acts. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Life Acts! Woo! The Girls of Grace were hoping to win enough money to buy a refrigerated truck for their charity. Esau! Esau is exactly right. Good job. Woo! Girls of Grace are on the board. And although they faced a nerve-wracking ride to the final revelation. Time's up. That was Cleveland Browns domination well, there, last, man. Hey, are we trying to dominate something? You have to have all three right to guarantee yourself a spot in the final revelation. When we were down after the first and second round, we knew that the third and fourth round were super, super important. Does Elizabeth have three right answers? Yes, yeah, she does! They bounced back when it mattered most. Solomon. Bathsheba. Revelation. Correct. That's seven. You got it. Please welcome back the girls of grace, Ezra Lee, Elizabeth, and Cindy. This $20,000 that you won the first time, that's got to be huge for you. What would that do? We just moved into a new facility, and so right now the warehouse is a shell, and we need industrial shelving, we need walk-in refrigeration, we need everything, and so this $20,000 is gonna be such a blessing for us. All right. Somebody in San Diego, they need shelving, they need refrigeration. Come on. Let's make that happen. Good luck okay. today. You, you guys are really inspired. Bless you. And finally, the Wagner Warriors came to the show prepared for battle and claimed victory. Check it out. You gotta beat him. He's only one man. Ah. My name is Joshua Wagner. I'm from the team Wagner Warriors. We grew up as pastor's kids, living in the church, hanging out at church. What we've been experiencing for our whole lives has really been leading up to this moment. We're playing for one nation one day. We reach out to the most unreached areas of the world. And when you're able to give them fresh water or clean food, to see the joy on their face is indescribable. Their hearts were in the right place, but the Wagner Warriors got off to a rocky start. Wagner Warriors yet to get on the board. In the first round, we didn't get any on the buzzer. E? Oh! Competition was fierce, man. But they soon hit their stride. Dreamer. Dreamer, absolutely right. <laughs> Are there three correct answers on the board? Harry, there you go. And blitz the competition in the final round. Xerxes, Haman, seven. Correct. That is five correct answers. Congratulations. <laughs> Making the semifinals is awesome. But now it's time for us to prepare. We know the competition is going to yeah. be even more fierce than yeah. this one was. Welcome back to Wagner Warriors, Jesse, Josh, and Daniel. So, guys, the last time you were here, you won $20,000. Oh, Explain to everybody what you were going to do with that money. The president of Honduras has invited us to come and bring medical supplies. So this is going to pay for medical professionals to go down there, to bring medicine to people that don't even have it. You know, until you've been to a third world place yeah. and been to a place mm -hmm. where there's some people yeah. that 
never are going to yeah. see a, a doctor know, or a right. dentist in their entire life. So when you have something like this and somebody comes in, I mean, it's it's, it's really it's like awesome. standing under a waterfall of grace. So that's so cool. Good luck today. Let's add to that total. Everybody ready to play this game? All right. Well, this works just like the last time you were here. You're going to start the game playing with teams of three. Then you're going to go down to two players and finally just one. Now, later tonight, the top two teams will face off in a biblical showdown, but only one of them will be leaving tonight with another $20,000 for their charity. And even better than that, they're going to be back next week for our grand finale and a shot at $100,000. All right, well, it's time to start our last American Bible Challenge semifinal. Let's go. Our first category today is called listings in this week's TV God. Okay. <laughs> now, the following might have been popular TV game shows during biblical times. Each correct answer is worth 10 points, minus 10 points. If you're wrong, take a look at the first one. All right, minute to send it. In this episode, Aiken has 60 seconds to find and bury a beautiful robe, 200 shekels of silver, and a bar of gold. Here's your question. Aiken took these items from where? Jericho, Gomorrah, the temple, Target. Lisa. Jericho. Jericho is absolutely right. That is in Joshua 7, 20 through 26. All right, take a look at the board. Here's our next listing. The Price is Righteous. In this episode's final showcase, Abraham bids 400 shekels of silver for the field and cave of Machpelah. In the Bible, what did Abraham use the cave for? A house, a hideout, a back cave, or a burial place? Carrie. A burial place. A burial place is absolutely right for 10 points. He used the cave to bury his wife Sarah in. All right, take a look at the board. Let's see our next <laughs> biblical TV listing. Are you smarter than an eight-year-old king? Game show prodigy Josiah cleans up in a geography category when it turns out that all the questions are about the place he reigns from. Where did Josiah reign from? Lystra, Jerusalem, Gibeon, or Funky Town? Jesse. Uh, we're going to say Jerusalem. Jerusalem is absolutely right for 10 <laughs> points. Go, Jess. The comic in me so badly wanted to say, I'm sorry, you're wrong. It was Funky Town. But right now, I am going to give each team a chance to pick up 25 additional points. But you can put your buzzers down. We ask 100 Uversion app users, the online Bible, the following question. Which would you rather spend? One day as Job, three days in a whale, or 40 days on the ark? Which was the most popular answer given by those 100 users? Pick the right one, you'll get 25 more points. So teams, talk it over amongst yourselves while you talk it over together at home. The second semifinals is officially underway. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Kirk Franklin and the American Bible Challenge Choir. during the commercial break. Now, in the audience today is former legendary pro football player Rosie Greer, and you are the great uncle to Nikki in our choir. So, that's awesome. Welcome to the show. Well, before the break, we told you we asked 100 version app users, which is the online Bible, the following question. Would you rather spend one day as Job, three days in a whale, or 40 days on the ark? 
Which one was the most popular answer given by those app users? Kirk, what do you think the most popular answer is? Jeff, I would say for me, I would say one day as Joe because 40 days on that arc, <laughs> you talk yeah. about funky town. <laughs> Yeah, 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 they only had the one little window up top. That's the original Funky Town. Yeah. Right? yeah. But it doesn't matter what we think. During the break, each team wrote down what they thought the most popular answer was on their individual tablets. And remember, if you pick the right one, it's 25 additional points for your team. Let's take a look at what everybody picked. 40 days in the arc, 40 days on the arc, 40 days on the arc. Everybody <laughs> had the same answer. Women of Faith, what made you say that? We thought 40 days on the arc could be kind of more of a cruise, like maybe they had ice sculptures <laughs> and a buffet. Oh, so I, I, lo I love your optimism because <laughs> I'm thinking three days sleeping next to a warthog yeah. may not be so nice either. Well, the most popular answer given was in fact 40 days yeah. in the arc, so everybody gets the 25 bonus points. But right now, it's time to get you out from behind your podiums and time to do a little something physical. Today's game is called Book 'em, Daniel, and here's how it works. Underneath the cloth on your table are seven books of the Bible. When I say go, you'll uncover your books and figure out the order in which they appear in the Bible. Then stack them in that order, alternating horizontal and vertical like this. Once you finish building your stack, step back behind your line to lock it in. The first team to stack them in the right order and get behind the line with their stack still standing earns 50 points. All right, if you do it wrong or if it doesn't stay standing until the entire team is back behind the line, your table will turn red and you're gonna have to try again. All three teams will play at the same time, so get on your mark, get set, go. Come on, come on. Okay, song is song. This is Joshua. All right, all three teams are off to a fast start. Esther. Okay, okay. Everybody okay. gives us first. Um, the Girls of Grace have Leviticus, Joshua, and Esther. And so do the Wagner Warrior. Oh, the women of faith are struggling. The Girls of Grace are pulling ahead. Ah, it's still anybody's game. Malachi. Oh, the Wagner Warriors dropped their stack. Girls of Grace have Leviticus, Joshua, Esther, Song of Songs, Daniel, Habakkuk, and Malachi. I have to get my inner child out, though. Oh. Good job, ladies. 50 additional points for your team. All right, step back here. When we come back, we're going to turn up the tension in our second semifinal for the American Bible Challenge semifinals just ahead. Challenge semifinals. And take a look right over there. These are the Sisters of Mary who are guaranteed a spot in the grand finale. And the Righteous Rubies who will be competing later in the show for their own wild card spot. All right, Wagner Warriors, right now it is the time when one of you is going to step back for the next round. Who's the brave one? Josh, take a step back. We'll see you in a little bit. This time, our category is going to be called all dogs love the book of Roof. <laughs> All right, let me explain. If dogs could read, they might interpret the Bible differently than we do. So see what I mean? I'm going to show each team a picture of a dog who has read a biblical passage and come to his own canine conclusions. Then I'm going to ask you a question about it. Now, correct okay. answers are worth 50 points. Let's take a look at our first picture. Obey your master? I can do that. In what two letters does Paul tell Christians to obey their earthly masters? Is it Romans and Galatians, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, or Ephesians and Colossians? Ephesians, Ephesians and, and Colossians. Colossians. Romans and Galatians. Ephesians, Ephesians, 6, Ephesians 6, 6, 5, and Colossians, and Colossians 4. Or Colossians 3, the end of it. Uh, we're going to go with Ephesians and Colossians. Ephesians and Colossians. <laughs> this is just a wild guess, right? <laughs> yeah, wild guess. <laughs> Ephesians and Colossians, is that correct? You bet it is. 
Ephesians 6, 5, Colossians 3, 22. So there you go. Right there at the end. Good job, guys. Pick it up. Wow, I wasn't expecting them to know the actual oh, verses, too. I know. Yeah. I kind of right. feel like a donkey at the Kentucky <laughs> Derby. Women of Faith, who is going to be the Bible wizard and take a step back? Lisa, once again, is going to go back. Oh. All right, take a look at the board. Let's see your question. When my ears itch, I just scratch them. Who needs false teachers? What epistle that talks about itching ears has this dog been reading? Romans, 2 Timothy, or Titus? Oh, dear. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, Carrie, I don't think it's Romans. Um, 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy's a lot for a dog to read, though. I have a horrible feeling it's Titus. If only dogs could talk. Mm -hmm. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think. I know. Oh. <laughs> Titus. 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 Lisa, you're smiling. Is that a good smile? That's exactly what I would have chosen. If only Lisa had been up here, then she would have been exactly wrong along with you. Your gut instinct was right. It's okay, actually 2 okay, Timothy. That's okay. Chapter 4, verse 3, Paul warns Timothy that false teachers oh, will tell right. lies that people's ears are that's itching right. for. Oh, that one. Yeah, oh, that one, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. All right, who's going to step back this time? Woo! Elizabeth, there we go. See you in a little bit. All right, Ezra Lee and Cindy, take a look at the board. Better a living dog than a dead cat. LOL, so true. <laughs> Where in the Bible can you find the phrase, even a live dog is better off than a dead lion? Ecclesiastes, Proverbs, or Psalms? It sounds proverbial to me, but it's a little bit negative. This is not a verse I have in my memory bank. What no. about you? No. No, so, OK. <laughs> uh, I would definitely lean towards Ecclesiastes. Yes. You? Same. OK, Ecclesiastes. So you're going with Ecclesiastes. Actually, the correct answer is Ecclesiastes. <laughs> It is from Ecclesiastes 9.4, and it means that being unimportant and alive is better than being impressive and dead. Yes. <laughs> and I think we can all agree with that. <laughs> okay, in our next game, this category is called Elisha. I thought you said Elijah. This category is about people in the Bible that have similar sounding names. So I'm going to read you a fact, and then you have to tell me which of the people that it fits. Here is the first fact. Um, uh, that priest who gave Goliath's sword to David, the guy with a funny name, who is he again? Abimelech, Ahimelech, or Elimelech? It's not Elimelech. Yeah. Elimelech is Naomi's husband. My, my gut reaction was Abimelech. Who is I Ahimelech? Don't, I don't know who Ahimelech is. Oh, I don't even know if he's in the Bible. <laughs> no, he's in the Bible. Okay, I see what you think Abimelech. Okay, okay. Go for it. Jeff, Abimelech. First one, Abimelech. Yes, Abimelech. Well, the correct answer is Ahimelech, oh. not Abimelech. I'm sorry. It's tough. All tough. right. Tough. OK, we're good. We're good. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. I don't know. Go. Right now, you I can hide know. if you want to, but you still have to play this. You got it, Kerry. This is a little it, scary, Kerry. isn't it? Well, yeah. you guys are all champions. We got to amp it up a little bit. All right, take a look at the board. Here's your fact. That king that Jeremiah served under, something with a Z, uh, his name was Zebediah, Zephaniah, or Zedekiah. Yes, one of those. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mercy. See, all of the above. Um, I'm pretty sure it's not Zebediah. Zephaniah. Oh, is that the one you think it is? You, you say what you're going to say first. No, you go. I was going to say, I don't think it's Zephaniah, because isn't that um, a book in the Bible? Well, uh, yeah. I, do you think it's Zedekiah? I feel like it would be Zedekiah. OK, I have zero confidence, but I think we'll just have to go with Zedekiah. 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 See, and I don't even know why I'm laughing, because I'm from the South, where we have names like Bubba Jr. or <laughs> Skeeter the uh, Third. Actually, it is Zedekiah. 50 yeah. points. Good job, ladies. Yes, yeah, baby, yeah. This game's got me a little nervous. Here's your fact. 
That uh, idol-worshiping ruler of Judah who was Hezekiah's father, what was that guy's name again? Azaz, Ahaz, or Ahab? Definitely don't think it's Azaz. No. Let's rule that one out yes. right away. OK. Um, Ahab, do you remember anything about Jezebel's Ahab? husband? Do you remember if Hezekiah came after him? I can't think that that was the child of Jezebel. Mm -mm. Yikes. So by process of elimination, Ahaz? Ahaz. OK, Ahaz. Ahaz. Elizabeth, okay. you're, you're so calm. I believe and have faith in them. You don't really know the answer then, do you? I was going to choose Ahaz. If you're wrong, you can include her. In. <laughs> but you're not wrong. The correct yeah! answer is Ahaz. <laughs> All right, let's recap our scores now. Wagner Warriors have 85, yeah! Women of Faith 95, Girls of Grace 175. Yeah! All right, let's switch it up, everybody. gets to play again next week for an additional $100,000. Don't go anywhere. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Tell Martha not to mourn. Two teams will advance to the final revelation. It all comes down to something we call the chosen three. I'm going to ask each player one question, but here's the deal. That question has three correct answers. Each correct answer you give me is worth 100 points. Give me all three right answers, you'll get 300 points. So, girls of grace, we are going to start with you. Right now, you are in the lead. So if you get all three right answers, you guarantee yourself a shot to be playing in the final yes. revelation today. Here is our first chosen three question. Which three of these are credited with composing a psalm found in the book of Psalms? Uriah the Hittite, Ethan the Ezraite, Jonathan, Moses, Asaph, or the sons of Israel? I know for sure, for sure, Asaph, so we'll start with him. I want to say that there's a psalm that Moses had written also. And I'm going to go ahead and um, say sons of Israel. So we'll say Asaph, Moses, and the sons of Israel. Asaph, Moses, and the sons of Israel. OK, Asaph was the one you were sure about. Is Asaph correct? <laughs> Asaph wrote Psalms 50 and 73 through 83. All right, your next pick you said was Moses. Is Moses correct? <laughs> Moses is in fact correct. <laughs> Moses wrote Psalm 90. Now, I told you, if you had all three correct, you guarantee yourself a place in the final revelation. So, is the sons of Israel correct? Oh. oh! We thought so, too. It's actually Ethan the Ezraite, who wrote Psalms 89. So two out of three. Very good job, Elizabeth. All right, now we go to the Wagner Warriors. You must get one correct answer to stay in the game. And here's the good news. You get all three of them correct, you're a lot to play in the final revelation, OK? Wow. You got the Here's your chosen three question. According to Luke 8, which three of these were women who traveled with Jesus and were healed of evil spirits and diseases? Mary Magdalene, Priscilla, Joanna, Susanna, Elizabeth, or Lydia? OK, well, I'm going to start by eliminating Jeff. Elizabeth was the wife of Zechariah, mother of John the Baptist. 
Lydia is only mentioned in Acts. She was a dealer in purple cloth. Priscilla was the wife of Aquila and I know wasn't mentioned in Luke chapter eight either. So what that leaves us with is Mary Magdalene is my first answer, Joanna is my second answer, and Susanna is my third answer. Josh, that was impressive. Thanks. If only you're right. <laughs> if only. One to stay in. Let's, let's get one out of the way let's first. Let's do that. Is Mary Magdalene correct? There's your one. So it's Mary Magdalene from whom seven demons had come out. So, right. all right. Guaranteed to stay in the game. Two would be better. Two would be great. Is Joanna correct? You betcha Joanna is more, correct. Joanna, the wife of Chusa. And is Susanna correct? If it is, you're guaranteed a spot in the final revelation. <laughs> yes, it is! Yes, Joshua, Thank you. very good work. This is why we call it the white knuckle round. You have to get all three correct to oh, guarantee yourself a spot night. in the final revelation. Okay. If you get all three, the girls of grace will be going home. Here's your chosen three question. According to 2 Corinthians 11, which three of these trials did Paul face during his journeys? Pelted with stones, boils and leprosy, earthquakes, danger from rivers, Lion attacks or sleep deprivation? I know it's earthquakes. I'm pretty sure it's danger from rivers, and I believe it's pelted with stones. Earthquakes, pelted with stones, and danger from rivers. Yeah, okay. that's right. my answer. I'm sticking to it. <sighs> Got to have three to stay in it. Okay. Is pelted with stones correct? Yes, it is. Now, you were between danger with rivers and sleep deprivation. Yeah, it just seems like he talked about drowning. I can't remember it verbatim, okay. but I thought he talked about drowning. Danger from rivers. Is that correct? Okay. If Earthquakes is right, you're going on to the final revelation. It'd be great. If it's not, the girls of grace are going on to the if final it's not, revelation. I'm going to break out in boils. This is, <laughs> don't break out in boils. <laughs> For a spot in the final revelation, is Earthquakes correct? No. Oh, goodness. You know what it was? Sorry. Line attacks? Sleep deprivation. Oh, you're kidding. Sleep deprivation. <laughs> I hate to see you leave. Keep doing what you're doing and, and rescuing these young women and, and, and taking away that shame and guilt. 2,500 additional dollars to you, 20,000. Thank you, Jack. Thank you so much. Safe travels. Have a nice All right, teams. The Girls of Grace and the Wagner Warriors, it is down to you two. In the final revelation today, we're going to ask you questions about this category. Sheep. I'm going to give you 10 minutes for some good old-fashioned Bible study. So here are your Bibles. Go to your backstage study rooms to prepare, and when you get there, you're going to find a tablet loaded with you version if you would like to use that. Good luck, everybody, and we'll see you in just a little bit. Well, we have got quite a game going on in the
the second and last American Bible Challenge semifinal for season two. Backstage, the girls of grace and the Wagner Warriors are studying up on sheep in the Bible with $20,000 and a place in our grand finale just waiting for one of them. If a man owns 100 sheep and one of them wanders away, will he not leave the 99 on the hills and go to look for the one that wandered off? But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they don't recognize a stranger's voice. And then you've got Matthew 25, the sheep and the goats. We know that story really well. Solomon sacrificed a whole bunch of sheep. Lamb is on Mount Zion, and he has the 144,000 with him, and they worship him. Lion facts! Lion facts! I got ready! Wait, the warriors! Well, Bible study is over, and it is now time for our teams to put their knowledge about sheep on the line. Come on out here, girls of grace. <laughs> Welcome back, ladies. We all hope you studied hard. Now, you have been here before. You know how it works. You have one minute to answer as many questions as you can on sheep. And whoever gets the most right answers will win another $20,000 for their charity and a chance to come back and compete next week in our grand finale for $100,000. Good luck. Can we dim the lights, please? All right, put 60 seconds on the clock, if you would. Let's start the clock. Who does Jesus tell three times to take care of Peter. his sheep? Correct. In the parable of the lost sheep, how many total 99. sheep? Incorrect. What king sacrificed so many sheep at the dedication of the Saul. temple? Incorrect. David saved his sheep from a lion and what other animal? Bear. Correct. In Matthew 7, 15, Jesus says, what people wear sheep's clothing but are really wolves? Pass. Name the shepherdess who became the wife of Jacob. Rachel. Correct. In a parable, Jesus speaks of sheep being separated from what other farm animal? Goats. Correct. After an attack, what prophet chastised Saul for sparing the sheep against God's instructions? Pass. Jesus said that the sheep will scatter when who is struck? When pass. In what city did David tend his father's flocks? Bethlehem. Correct. Jesus said he was sent only to the lost sheep of what place? Israel. Correct. In Time is up. Six correct answers, ladies. Good job. Let's go back and review the ones that you missed. In the parable of the lost sheep, how many total sheep does the man have before any wander away? And the answer, you said 99. It's 100. Third question, what king sacrificed so many sheep at the dedication of the temple that they could not be counted? You said Saul. It was actually Solomon. Solomon. In Matthew 7, 15, Jesus says, what people wear sheep's clothing but are really wolves? The answer is false prophets. And after an attack, what prophet chastised Saul for sparing the sheep against God's instructions? That was Samuel. And the last one, Jesus said that the sheep will scatter when who is struck? The answer is the shepherd. But six correct answers. How are you feeling about that? Six is good. Are right, you ready? Let's bring out the Wagner Warriors now. Welcome back, guys. Thank you. That was study time. Awesome. Hopefully it paid off. Well, let me tell you this. The Girls of Grace got six answers wow. correct. Great job. So Great that job, means girl. you have to beat their score. You ready for this? Yes. Now our teams are really feeling the tension. In just one minute, one of them will win another 20000 for their charity and reach our American Bible Challenge grand finale for a chance at $100,000. Stay right where you are. stands between one of these teams and the grand finale. This group of questions. One team is going on and the other team will compete again tonight right after this final revelation round for our wild card position against the Righteous Rubies. Wagner Warriors, are you ready for this? We're ready. Yes. ready. Okay, I told you. Your opponents, the Girls of Grace, got six correct answers. That means you need seven right answers to win. Girls of Grace, if you would, will you stand over there? Okay, let's dim the lights. 60 seconds on the clock, please. And start the clock. Who does Jesus tell three times to take care of his sheep? Peter. Correct. In the parable of the lost sheep, 
How many total sheep does the man have before any wander away? A hundred. Correct. What king sacrificed so many sheep at the dedication of the temple that they could not be counted? David. Incorrect. David saved his sheep from a lion and what other animal? Bear. Correct. In Matthew 7, 15, Jesus says, what people wear sheep's clothing but are really wolves? Uh, false prophets. Correct. Name the shepherdess who became the wife of Jacob. Abigail. Incorrect. In the parable, Jesus speaks of sheep being separated from what other farm animal? Goats. Correct. After an attack, what prophet chastised Saul for sparing the sheep? Samuel. Correct. Jesus said that the sheep will scatter when who is struck? The shepherd. Correct. That's all you guys, seven correct answers. <laughs> Wagner Warriors, congratulations. <laughs> you have just won another $20,000 for the One Nation, bringing your total to $40,000 and going off for a chance to win another $100,000 in our grand finale next week against the Sisters of Mary. I'm right. sorry, guys. I don't know what was going through my Wagner mind. Warriors, if you will do me a favor, I'm going to ask you to go join the Sisters of Mary in the audience, okay? All right. Righteous Rubies, you join me on stage now, if you would. <laughs> Welcome back, ladies. Righteous Rubies, Girls of Grace, you both come in second place in your semifinal games, so both of you have one last chance to move on to the grand finale. I'm going to ask Righteous Rubies and Girls of Grace one question to see which team will be moving on. Teams, I want you to pick one player to answer that question. So who will it be from the Righteous Rubies? Ogechi. Ogechi. Who will it be from the Girls of Grace? Elizabeth. Elizabeth, okay. Bring me the tablets, please. You are going to write your answer on these. The team with the closest to the correct numerical answer will be moving on to next week's American Bible Challenge grand finale to play against the Sisters of Mary and Wagner Warriors for an additional $100,000. All right, players, step forward, please. All right, here is the question. How many total chapters are there in the New Testament? All right. Both players have written down their answers. Elizabeth, may we see what you said? 363. Ogechi, may we see what you said? 90. The question was, how many total chapters are there in the New Testament? The correct answer is 260. Elizabeth, you are closest. <laughs> You're walking away with $25,000 for your charity. You're coming back next week to play for $100,000. It's the moment you've been waiting for. Tonight, one team is going to walk away with $100,000. Will it be the Girls of Grace, the Wagner Warriors, or the Sisters of Mary? I'm Jeff Foxworthy, and this is the American Bible Challenge Grand Finale. Everybody get up on your feet. Are you guys doing the duck? such a great season, and we are going to make it even more special with an amazing performance by tonight's guest stars, award-winning gospel artist, Mary Mary.
But those are not the only stars on our show tonight, and I am talking about our three teams. Tonight, one of them will win an additional $100,000 for their charity and be crowned the new American Bible Challenge champion. You know, we have had some great stories this season on the American Bible Challenge, but maybe the most amazing of all is how our three returning teams made it all the way to our grand finale. Check it out. Hi, I'm Sister Maria Suso. I'm Sister Peter Joseph. And I'm Sister Evangeline. And, and we're, we're Team Sisters, Sisters of Mary. Mary. All right, everyone, get ready, because we've got 120 sisters praying for us, so we're going to win the American Bible Challenge. This sister act from Ann Arbor, Michigan, flew high above the competition from the start. The nuns high five. There we go. I didn't even realize we won at first, because I was so busy trying to remember what the answer to the questions were. But in the semifinals, the battle was fierce. The questions have been harder, and when we heard that Rachel's Rubies had gotten eight right, and that made us a little nervous. So you're going to need nine to win. What gospel does the miracle of turning water into wine appear? John. Ghost. Fig. Bartimaeus. Leprosy. Peter. So correct. Nine correct answers. You won. You are the first team to make it to our grand finale. Now they're hoping to win another $100,000, making it $140,000 for the Retired Sisters Fund. I can't imagine us winning $140,000 for the retirement fund. It's all happening so fast. My name is Joshua Wagner from the team Wagner Warriors. We grew up as pastor's kids. We feel like we've been preparing for the American Bible Challenge our entire lives. Here we go. Here we go. They may have prepared for this their whole life, but things didn't go so well in the semifinals. It was a very pressure-filled situation. Jeff Abimelech. Ahimelech, not Abimelech. My heart was pounding that whole time. It's tough, man. I was man, not. It's tough. But they managed to scrape through to the final revelation. Yes, yes. they did. Where they sailed to an impressive victory. Goats. Samuel. The shepherd. That's all you need, guys. Seven correct answers. <laughs> just goes to show that you're, you're never out of this thing. If you just keep on pushing and keep on trying, you can win it. The girls of Grace are playing to feed the hungry with their Life Acts mission. We let them know how important they are. With every meal we feed them, we know that the money that we win would help the over 6,000 people that we feed every month. In the semifinals, they faced a heartbreaking elimination in the final revelation. Wagner Warriors, congratulations! But got a crucial second chance with the wild card round. How many total chapters are there in the New Testament? I couldn't do the math right away. Really quickly, I scratched it out because I knew that was not the right number. Elizabeth, may we see what you said? The correct answer is 260. Elizabeth, you are closest to the number. We're excited, we're passionately pumped and ready. I think our game plan going into the finals will be to just keep doing what we've been doing. It seems to have been working. We're playing against the Sisters of Mary and the Girls of Grace. You know so we're doing. gonna have some real tough competition in this final. All right, well, I am going to start with our grand finale's wild card team. Everybody, please welcome the Girls of Grace, Ezra Lee, Elizabeth, and Cindy. What an amazing story. Your dad used to go up and pick up day-old bread and just go deliver it around the neighborhood to people that didn't have enough to eat. My mom and dad made sure that nothing was put to waste. They went to local supermarkets, and they decided that just as one person is so important, even every single piece of food is important, too, to get to each of those people that are so precious. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Great to have you here in the finale. Good luck tonight, girls. Please welcome back the Wagner Warriors, Jesse, Josh, and Daniel. That was a tough game last week. Sure was. Oh, Very yes. intense. You're trying to raise money for your charity, One Nation, One Day. Yeah. You're getting a trip together to go to Honduras. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about what winning $100,000 would mean for what you're trying to do. Jeff, it, it would mean so much just to think that we'd be able to bring down hundreds of, of thousands of medical supplies to this nation and these Amen. people that need it. Good Amen. luck, guys. You're Thank a really you. good Thank team. You. Thank you. And then there's tonight's final team. Please welcome back the Sisters of Mary, Sister Evangeline, Yay! Sister Maria Suso, and Sister Peter Joseph. Yay! Welcome back, sisters. We were wondering, we were talking about this today. Say you won the whole thing. We know you're trying to win money for the retirement fund for some of the older sisters within your convent, and I'm sure they're rooting you on, really rooting you on. <laughs> but if you get back, do you have 
parties at a convent? I mean, <laughs> what, what, what is a throwdown at the convent? Um, well, we definitely like to have parties. Um, I would guess if we won $100,000 tonight, there might be some cookies. <laughs> <laughs> I got to tell you, if I flew all the way to L.A. and, and brought back $140,000, I'd be going, cookies, really? <laughs> well, you know, the love of our sisters is enough, just seeing their smiling faces. The love of your sisters. What a cool thing. Good luck. God bless you. Everybody ready to play the game tonight? Yes, sir. Yes. All right, let's play the American Bible Challenge. <laughs> Today is called Scripture Prescriptions. Now, back in the day when people needed healing, they often turned to divine sources instead of doctors. We'll show you some prescriptions found in the Bible, and you'll tell us what it cured. Each correct multiple choice answer is worth 10 points. Incorrect answers are minus 10 points. All right, take a look at the board at our first prescription. Have David pick up his lyre and play. And this is signed by Saul's attendants. Here is the question. According to 1 Samuel 16, this would be a prescription for getting rid of what? Evil spirits, blindness, cooties, or arthritis? Josh. Evil spirits. Evil spirits. Evil spirits is exactly right. According to 1 Samuel 16, 23, whenever the Spirit of God came upon Saul, David would take out his harp and play. Then relief would come to Saul. He would feel better, and the evil spirit would leave him. Good job. All right, take a look at the board. Here's our next one. Go outside the camp and come back when you look better. This one is signed by God. Here is the question. According to Leviticus 13, this would be a prescription to cure what? Bad facelift, <laughs> loss of limb, jaundice, or skin disease. Girls of Grace, Ezra Lee. Skin disease? Skin disease. Skin disease. Skin disease is exactly right. <laughs> it says if you had a skin blemish or sore, you'd be sent away. If you look better in seven days, you get to return. That's just a good way to get rid of teenagers, isn't it? <laughs> All right, you got to go away for a little while. All right, take a look at the board. Here is our final prescription. Let me do the following. One, put my fingers in your ears. Two, spit. Three, touch your tongue. Four, say, Ephatha. This one is signed by Jesus. Here is the question. According to Mark 7, this would be a prescription to cure what? Dizziness, deafness and muteness, muscle aches, or Bieber fever. Girls of Grace Elizabeth. That would be deafness and muteness? Yes. Deafness and muteness. Deafness and muteness is absolutely right for 10 more points. Good job. Well, right now, I'm going to give each of you a chance to pick up 25 additional points. And you won't be ringing in for this one. We ask 100 women users of the online Bible app, you version the following question. Who do you think was most to blame for the first sin? Adam, Eve, or the snake? Which was the most popular answer given by those 100 women Uversion app users? You pick the right one, you'll get 25 more points. So teams, you talk it over while you talk it over together at home. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Kirk Franklin and the American Bible Challenge Choir. Come on, everybody, get up, y'all. Put your hands together. How you guys feeling up there? Come on, rock with us. We're gonna have a good time right now. Let's go, let's go. Women who use the online Bible, you version the following question. Who do you think was most to blame for the first sin? Adam, Eve, or the snake? Kirk, what are you thinking? Jeff, I believe that since the beginning of time, man was created to take the blame. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Uh, spoken by a man that's been married a long time, too. Amen. All right. Buddy. During the break, you each wrote what you thought was the most popular answer on your tablets. If you pick the right one, I'm going to give you 25 additional points. Team, right now, show me your answers. Oh, wow, got a little diversity. Uh, Girls of Grace said the snake. Wagner Warriors said about Adam. And the Sisters of Mary said the snake. All right, let's see what the most popular answer was. Eve. Come on. How about that? Wow. And this is very interesting. That was from 100 women polled. Now, from 100 men polled, they said that most of them believed Adam was responsible. And they didn't poll any snakes, but we're thinking they would have gone with the snake. (laughs) All right, so nobody picked up the bonus points. But we're going to give you another chance to pick up some points. Are you ready? Yeah. All right, it is time to get physical. All right. This game is called Book, Chapter, and Verse. And here's what you'll do. On each table are three cubes. Each side has a different book, chapter, or verse number. I'll read a passage from the Bible, and your job is to rearrange the cubes to form the book, chapter, and verse in which that passage appears. Once you think you've got it, step behind the line to lock it in. Then I'll read another passage. You're going to flip your cubes again and so on. You'll have 60 seconds to solve up to four books, chapter, and verses, and the team with the most at the end of the round wins 50 points. So we're going to play this game one team at a time. Sisters of Mary, you were drawn at random to play the game first. So, Wagner Warriors and Girls of Grace, if you will step off stage for just a minute. Thanks. Let's put 60 seconds on the clock, please. Here is your first biblical passage. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John, okay. Okay. Correct. Next passage. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. No, No. do I just have to make Proverbs? All right, Proverbs. I've got a chapter. Oh, pick one. Okay. Verse? Pick one that's a verse. Okay. Good, good. Go, go. Incorrect. Next one. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. What did you know it is? I know it's 1 Corinthians 13. Do you have? Okay. In 13? 13? Check check over here. Oh, here it is. Here it is. 15 seconds. Okay. Um, What do you have? Four. Five, five, five. Okay, there you go. got it. Incorrect. Next one. Unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor. Time is up. You got the first one right. John 1.1. 1, 1. The second one. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. You put Proverbs 64.38. It's actually Proverbs 3.5. And then the next one. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. You had 1 Corinthians 13.5. It's actually 13.4. You were so Uh close. So you got one correct. Let's see if that stands up. Go back to your podium, please. Wagner Warriors, come on over. All right, guys, let me tell you this. The Sisters of Mary got one answer correct. So right now, that is the score to beat. Here is your first biblical passage. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Genesis Genesis. 1. One I got, I got, I got one. I got one verse uh, two. One verse two? No, no, no. One verse three? One verse? Uh, three, one verse sure. three. 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 Where is it? Oh, Genesis. Genesis. Back. 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 Correct. Next one. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father oh, in heaven, nine. hallowed be your name. Six, nine. Six, okay. nine. Six, six, six. Nine. Nine. Matthew. Nine. Get Matthew there. Get back, get back, get back. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Go, I need to make sure. Okay. Stop. Correct. Next one. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Psalms 100. 15 100. seconds. I, I think it's verse 1. What, you, what chapter you got? 118. One. Get back, get back. Correct. Next one. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. Uh, Proverbs? Time is up. Time is up. Good. I'll take it. All right, guys. It's good. 
Great job. Three correct answers. You can go back to your podium. <laughs> Girls of Grace, come on out now. Ladies, let me tell you, you need at least three correct answers to get the 50 points, okay? Here is your first biblical passage. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. Go. Galatians 5, 20. I got five. Galatians 5. I got five. five. I got five. I got Galatians. I got Galatians. I got Galatians. 24, 24. Galatians 5. Um, tw is it 24? That, do you have 24? I don't see a 24. I don't see a 24. 22, 22, 22. Okay, 22, 22, go, 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 go. Correct, next one. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about Hebrews. what we do not Hebrews see. Hebrews 11, 1. Hebrews 11, 1. I have one, I have one. What was that? One. 11, Hebrews 11, 11, 11. 11. 11. 11. 11. Look right here, right here, this side. This side, let's go, go, go. Next one. Whatever you do, work it out with all your heart. It's working for the Lord, not for human masters. I got three, I got three. Colossians 317. Colossians, you got Five seconds. Two, three, two, one. Time is up. So close. Two correct answers. The answer to the last one, of course, is Colossians 323. Good job, girls. Go back to your podiums if you would. All right, Wagner Warriors, you got the most correct with three answers, so you get the 50 points. Way to go. Thank you. Thank you. More of the American Bible Challenge grand finale coming up with the whole next round devoted to a dramatic new category that could easily change the course of the game. For one player from each team to step back and sit this one out. So, sisters, who is it going to be this time around? This time it's Sister Evangeline. Sister Evangeline, if you'll take a step back, we'll see you in a little bit. Our next category is called Yahweh or No Way. Now, here's how it works. I'm going to read each team up to three statements relating to the Bible. Some of them are true, some of them not so much. So, if you think the answer is true, you will say Yahweh. If you think the answer is false, you will say no way. Okay? Each time you answer correctly, you'll earn points. You'll also face a big decision to either keep your points and stop playing, or you can risk the points you've accumulated on another statement. But if you answer incorrectly at any point during the game, you will lose all the points that you have earned in this round so, Sisters of Mary, we're going to start with you. Now, your first statement is worth 25 points. Take a look. Job's wife turned into a pillar of salt. Is that Yahweh or no way? Well, I'm pretty sure that was Lot's wife. Yes. We're going to say no way. No way is no way. absolutely correct. It is no way. Congratulations, 25 points. All right, well, you can stop right now, or you can risk it on another statement and the chance to double your total to 50. Four feet ahead. Keep right. going. <laughs> I love this. The nuns are playing double or nothing. All right. <laughs> in the Bible, the name Salome is not mentioned in the story of John the Baptist beheading. Is that Yahweh or no way? True or false? I'm pretty sure it is, isn't it? Right. You think it's true? I think it's false because it says it's not mentioned, and I think it is. OK. All right, we'll go with no way. No way? The correct answer is Yahweh. In the story, she is just called Herodias's daughter, not Salome. So our 25 points just went away. Are you Still concerned? a lot of time. <laughs> Okay, girls of grace, who is going to be stepping back this time? Elizabeth, Hello. once again, we'll see you in a little bit. Okay, take a look at the board, and here is your first statement. Joshua and Caleb were brothers. 
Yahweh or no way? True or false? What do you think, Ezra? I think it's false. I know they're brothers in Christ, but not blood brothers, and that's no. what they're referring to in the question, right? So you want to go no way? No way. Okay. No way. No way. The correct answer is no way. You're absolutely right. Yeah, they were fellow soldiers during the time of Moses. Very good. You want to take the 25 points, or do you want to risk it on another question and try to turn it into 50 points? We'll go for it. You're going to go for it. All right, take a look at the board. In Revelation 6, 8, death's horse is pale. Yahweh or no way? Do you remember the word pale from Revelation? Yes. Do you think it was associated with a horse? Yes. Well, maybe we should go Yahweh. Okay, we'll go with Yahweh. Yahweh. Revelation 6, 8 says, I looked and there before me was a pale horse. Its rider was named Death and Hades was following close behind it. <laughs> Yahweh. All right. Do you want to stop here? Or do you want to try to add 50 more points to your total? We're going to go for it. We're going to try and You're go for it. You're going to go for it. Okay. Take a look at the board. Here is the next question. Zipporah once stopped God from killing her husband Moses. Yahweh or no way? I remember that God was going to. Um, I don't know if it was Zipporah that stopped him. Do you think it was Zipporah? No. I don't think it was Zipporah either. I hope not. We had two Yahwehs. So oh, no way. No way. <laughs> Gonna go no way? <laughs> Elizabeth, what kind of look? Oh, you're hanging oh. your head. What are you thinking, Elizabeth? Yahweh. Oh. You're thinking Yahweh? Yes. Oops. <laughs> Oops. Sorry. Whoops. If you're right, you'll be at 120. If you're wrong, you'll be back down to We're just nine? 20. Oh, to 20. The correct answer is Yahweh. Ah. <laughs> Very interesting. Moses didn't circumcise his son, and Zephora quickly performed the surgery to save his life. So, wow, that was interesting. And sisters, once again, I think we've learned the perils of gambling, haven't we? All right, guys. Who is going to step back during this game? Josh, see you later. All right. He's a staple. He's a staple. All right, you take a look at the board. Here's your first question. Jesus changed Saul's name to Paul. Yahweh or no way? I think it's Yahweh. I, I don't. Because it's, it's Jesus. I don't think Jesus changed his name. It doesn't say that anywhere. Do you understand what? Okay. I know what you mean. Okay. Let's. No way. No way. Now, who's older here? I am. You are. So you, you are. deferred to the older brother. Submission. Submission. <laughs> but you wanted to go with Yahweh. Yahweh. Thank God you listened to your brother because oh, the answer yes. is no way. Yes. Always yes. listen to older brother. Yes. Saul starts being called Paul in the middle of Acts. Jesus changed Simon's name to Peter, yeah. but not Saul's name to Paul. Yeah. So there you go. Do you want the points right now or do you want to go on? Well, the girls all seem to be gambling, so I, we might as well follow the trend. <laughs> You'll follow the trend. Let's do it. And I'm sure your parents in ministry are very proud. Yes. So, <laughs> all right, take a look at the board. The book of Leviticus contains the phrase, cleanliness is next to godliness. Yahweh or no way? No way. No way. No way. No way. <laughs> There's that's, no way. That's like, yeah, that's, that's not in the Bible. Um, we think there is no way that that is in Leviticus. Not at all. No way you think that. Actually, the correct answer is no way. Yes! All right! Great job. Okay. So, you go again, you can add 50 to that. You know, I, I think, if you agree with me, we're really happy with the position we're in, and I think we're just going to keep it. You're going to stop? Yeah. yeah. Good job, guys. Thank you. Very Thank good you. job. All right, let's recap the scores. Sisters of Mary have zero. Girls of Grace have 20, and in the lead are the Wagner Warriors at 110. All right. All right, everybody, let's switch it up. When we come back, two teams will move on to our final revelation round 
while one team's amazing journey will finally come to an end. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> we are back with more of the American Bible Challenge Grand Finale. So it all comes down to something we call the chosen three. Now, each player gets one question with six possible answers. Three of the answers are correct. Each right answer is worth 100 points. Get all three right, you'll get 300 points. Wagner Warriors, we're going to start with you since you have the lead. Get two questions right, and you are guaranteed a spot in our final, final revelation for $100,000. All right, here comes your question, Josh. In the book of Genesis, which three of these people are their father's first born son, Manasseh, Reuben, Seth, Simeon, Cain, and Ham. Reuben and Simeon are both sons of Jacob. I remember Reuben is the oldest, so my first answer is going to be Reuben. I also know that Cain was actually the first son ever, so I'm going to say Cain with my second answer. Manasseh is, as I remember, one of Joseph's two sons, the other being Ephraim, and I think Manasseh is the firstborn, and I'm gonna go with Manasseh as my third answer. Okay. Manasseh, Reuben, and Cain. I told you two correct answers. Guarantees you a spot in the final, final revelation. So, does Josh have one right answer? Reuben is absolutely right. Your brothers are grinning. Reuben is a good sign. Cain, I'm feeling pretty good about Cain. I feel great about yeah. Cain. <laughs> is Cain correct? Indeed yes. it is. All right, just for giggles, just for giggles, is Manasseh correct? One, two, three. Great job, Josh. Thank you. Very impressive. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hot. Wow. Sister, that was impressive. That was. That was impressive. All right, I want to give you some encouragement right now, okay? So take a look at the monitor. Your entire convent is cheering you on. <laughs> Start baking cookies, sister. All right, Sister Evangeline, you need one correct answer to stay in the game, okay? Okay. Take a look at the board. Good luck. Here's your question. Which three of these biblical figures were judges whose stories are told in the book of Judges? Ibzan, Joab, Doeg, Elon, Tola, or Abishai? Okay. I know Abishai is not, though, because um, he and Joab were um, brothers um, in the time of David. So, and I know Doeg was also during the time of David. So Ibsan, Elon, and Tola are the judges. I told you you needed one right answer to stay in the game. Without one, unfortunately, the sisters of Mary would be going home. So do we have one right answer, please? Yes, we do. How you feeling? Seeing the sisters helped. Seeing the sisters <laughs> helped? Oh, well, good. Do we have two right answers? Oh, yes, we do. Did we go three for three? You better believe it! Great job, Sister Evangeline. Great job. Yeah, Great job. Tough question. That was your question. Great. All right. Girls of Grace, Elizabeth. To make it to the final revelation today, you need three correct answers, okay? That's right. Good luck. Here is your question. 
Which three of these are nationalities of Job's advisors? Shuhite, Buzite, Girgashite, Namathite, Israelite, Shunammite. Help me, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I've never quite remembered hearing the name or the nationality Buzite. So I'm going to eliminate that. Ooh, help me, Holy Spirit. The first choice would be Girgashite. Second choice, Israelite. And third choice, I know Shunammite is a, and it was a Shunammite woman. She was a good woman. I remember her. <laughs> Let's go ahead and go with Shunammite as the third choice. Okay. So we have to have all three to make it to the final revelation. In order to have three, you have to start with one. So, which one you like the best? Let's go with the good old Israelite. The good old <laughs> Israelite. Is Israelite correct? Oh, what were the three right answers? Can we see them all at one time? Wow. Uh, the ones I How didn't about like. that? <laughs> Shuhite, Buzzite, wow. and Namahite. Wow. So, what a great team. Come on up here. <laughs> Girls, you're a great team. You came in third, but listen, we are going to make another contribution of $2,500 to your charity. Life Act. So you have raised a total of $27,500 for your charity. That is amazing. Good luck to you. Girls of Grace, everybody. Girls of Grace. Girls of Grace. Girls of Grace. Sisters of Mary and Wagner Warriors, it is down to you too. Today's final revelation will feature questions about this category. The Book of James. Now, you get only 10 minutes for some good old-fashioned Bible study. So here are your Bibles. You. Go to your backstage study rooms to prepare. Off you go. <laughs> Our teams are finally finishing up with Bible study. And tonight, there is $100,000 at stake. The book of James is written to the 12 tribes. Uh, chapter okay. three. And it's about the trials and temptations. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he yep. tempt anyone. Yep. Considering it pure joy when you face trials, because you know that will produce perseverance. Resist the devil, devil, and he will flee from you. Jesse, you got it? Yeah. It is time for our teams to put their knowledge to work about the book of James. So please welcome back Wagner Warrior. <laughs> welcome back, guys. All right, you know how it works. You'll get one minute to answer as many questions as you can on the book of James. And the stakes don't get any higher than this. Good luck, guys. Here we go. Can you dim the lights, please? Let's put 60 seconds on the clock. It is the book of James. Let's start the clock. If not accompanied by action, what does James say is dead? Faith. Correct. James compares what specific part of the body to the rudder? Tongue. Correct. What does James say will pass away like a wildflower? Pass. In chapter 4, 7, who does James tell us to resist? Uh, the proud. Incorrect. James 127 says a pure and faultless religion is one that looks after orphans and widows. Who? Correct. In James 1, what should believers be quick to do? Listen. Correct. Who cannot be tempted or tempts? God. Correct. According to James 3, what position in the church is judged more strictly? Teachers. Correct. James 511 mentions the perseverance Soul. of what? Correct. According to chapter 2, who believe there is one God and it causes them to shudder? Demons. Correct. Believers should consider it pure joy when facing what? Troubles of many kinds. Okay. Correct. According to James 5, the prayer of what kind of person? Righteous man. 
correct. In the... Wow. Wow. How many was that? Yeah. yeah. How, many, how many was that? You got 10 correct, guys. Thank you. 10 okay. correct. Daniel, amazing. Clutch. Amazing. Clutch. Guys, that was incredible. Thank you. You Thanks. only had two you did not answer. Who does James say will pass away like a wildflower? That is the rich. We would yeah. have accepted wealthy. Uh, in chapter 4, 7, who does James tell the us devil. to resist? It's the yes. devil or Satan. Yes. Ten correct answers. How are you feeling about that? I feel really good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, the other team has to get 11 to win. So let's bring out the Sisters of Mary now. Welcome back. Well, the Wagner Warriors got 10 correct answers, okay? So you need at least 10, 11 to win. Are you ready for this? Yes. One of these teams is so close to being our next American Bible Challenge champion. Yeah. We'll find out who it is right after this. Yeah. One of these teams will be walking out of here with more than $100,000 for their charity. All right, Sisters of Mary, are you ready for this? Yes. Okay, Wagner Warriors got 10 questions right, so you will need 11 to win. Wagner Warriors, if you would, please stand over there. Dim the lights, please. Put 60 seconds up there. and start the clock. If not accompanied by action, what does James say is dead? Um, sp speech. Incorrect. James compares what specific part of the body to the rudder Tongue. of a ship? I'm sorry? Tongue. Correct. Who does James say will pass away like a wildflower? The rich. Correct. In, J in chapter 4, 7, who does James tell us to resist? The devil. Correct. James 127 says a pure and faultless religion is one that looks after orphans and... Widows. Correct. In James 1, what should believers be quick to do? Resist evil. Incorrect. Who cannot be tempted nor tempts? Um, God. Correct. According to James 3, what position in the church is judged more strictly? The teachers. Correct. In James 5.11, it mentions the perseverance of what Old Testament character? Abraham. Incorrect. According to chapter 2, who believe there is one God and it causes them to shudder? Rahab. Uh, incorrect. Believers should consider it pure joy when facing what? Temptations. Correct. Time is up. Wagner Warriors, you just won $100,000. bringing your total to $45,000. We hope that makes a huge difference. Way to go, everybody. Thank you. $140,000. $45,000 for you. That is so awesome. Thank you, everybody, for making this a season to remember. We'll see you next season. season we've been working up to this moment and winning $20,000 is incredible and then winning the second $20,000 is incredible but on top of all that to win another $100,000 to oh think of all the things that we can do oh my it's God. amazing <laughs> Love you.